The Dominican is first of all a contemplative. St. Thomas Aquinas defines Dominican life as contemplagi et aliis contemplata trade, which means to contemplate and give to others the fruit of your contemplation. Our life consists first of all in the contemplative life, so our life is very much like the life of the Benedictines. What's specific to the Dominican life is study. The, Dem the Benedictines pray and work, when the Dominicans pray and preach. To do that, we have to study. I'm Father Albert. I'm a Dominican, traditional Dominican. I come from uh, Western Canada, Saskatchewan. I found tradition, it's, it's a long story, but I um, ended up going to Rome. And while I was there, I happened to meet a priest who had been sent to Rome to study because he refused to say the new mass and they, his congregation didn't know what to do with him, so they sent him there. And through him I got some books of Michael Davies and I began to understand what was going on in the church. I came to know then the Society of St. Pius X uh, and I spent a year at Ridgefield, Connecticut. This was back in 1986. 87. Uh, and when I was there, I heard that there were some traditional Dominicans in France who were working with the Society of St. Pius X. So I visited them and I ended up joining them in 1987. So I did my novitiate there and I was ordained priest in 1994 by Bishop Follet in Winona. In 2006, I was sent to help Father Cyprian in New Mexico, in his monastery there. At the same time, I started to do some preaching in the States. And then later, I was sent to the Novitiate of the Society of the, excuse me, the Sisters of the Society of St. Pius X in Minnesota for, to help there as well. Uh, I was there for three years. And at the same time, at the invitation of Father Rostand, I was going around uh, preaching in the chapels, especially I, I preached a, a number of rosary missions, quite a few actually. I think I must have preached that mission 20 times in different places. Last November, with the permission of Bishop Follet and under the authority of Bishop de Galaretta, who assists the religious communities who work with the Society of St. Pius X, we made a new foundation in Belgium. It's in a little town called Steffeshausen. It's right on the border with Germany. There was a traditional priest there who was persecuted by his bishop. And so he had to leave his church and he bought a hotel in this little town. And he built a church onto the hotel and he started um, a community there, a traditional community. A good number of the faithful in the town followed him. He died a couple years ago and the people were looking for someone to take over for him and we found out about them so they invited us to come and so we started this new foundation there last november 15th the, the feast of saint albert the great who was just down not too far away he's buried in cologne a great dominican he's a teacher of saint thomas aquinas so the five of us there's four priests and one lay brother we started a new Dominican Foundation. We're preaching above all is what we're doing. For example, I'm here in the United States in order to preach. I was in Denver to preach a recollection and I'm going to Ridgefield to preach a retreat. And back in Europe, two of our priests have been preaching retreats in Germany and one, one of our priests had just finished preaching a retreat for the Carmelites in Belgium, and another of our priests preaches a lot for the Dominican teaching sisters at Brignol. Another thing we do besides preaching is writing. It's another form of preaching. I've written a number of articles for the Angelus over the years, and also spoken at the Angelus Conference. And one of our priests, Father Jean Dominique, has written 
uh, a number of books, actually. One of his books on philosophy is used quite extensively in the schools of the society. One thing that maybe a lot of people don't know um, is that the different orders um, have a very particular way of participating in the life of their different orders. It's called the B, it's what's called the third order. The Franciscans have a third order, the Carmelites do, and we do as well. It started really with St. Francis, who had the, his, his friars, and then there were the sisters, the second order, and there were also lay people who wanted to follow St. Francis but still remain in the world. These are people who live in the world, and they're married usually, and have children, and they work, but they want to live a more religious life. And so these third orders are a way of allowing people to share in the spiritual life of a religious order um, while living in the world. So we've started a third order as well. We have a, the, a number of tertiaries who belong in a certain way to the Dominican. They're true Dominicans, and the church has approved these uh, third orders. It's even in canon law. And even when they die, they can be buried in the Dominican habit um, because they are true members of the order. They have a rule that they follow. They have this certain love for truth, a zeal to fight for the truth, and to contemplate the truth. Um, it's funny, some people are born Dominicans. It's just the way they are. <laughs> um, so we have this third order. They have a rule to follow. It's approved by the church. And like all the rules approved by the church, it means if you follow this rule, the church uh, guarantees that you will go to heaven. And so it's a, a very sure um, way to sanctify yourself.